I decided to hang out on the swing by the lake for a while, half because the heat had finally dissipated into a pleasant, if muggy, 80-something, and half because I thought Alaska might show up. But almost as soon as the colonel left, the bugs encroached. No see which for the record you can see, and mosquitoes hovered around me in such numbers that the tiny noise of their rubbing wings sounded to coffins. And then I decided to smoke. Now, I did think the smoke will drive the bugs away, and to some degree it did, although I would be lying if I claimed I became a smoker to ward off insects. I became a smoker because one, I was at an on around swing by myself, and two, I had cigarettes. And three, I figured that if everyone else could smoke a cigarette without coughing, I could damn well too. In short, I didn't have a very good reason. So yeah, let's just say that four, it was the bucks. I made it through three entire drags before I felt nauseous and dizzy and only semi-pleasantly buzzed. I got up to leave. As I stood, a voice behind me said, so do you really memorize the last words? She ran up beside me and grabbed my shoulder and pushed me back onto the porch swing. Yeah. You want to quiz me? JFK. That's obvious. Oh, is it now? No, those were his last words. Someone said, Mr. President, you can't say Dallas doesn't love you. And then he said, that's obvious, and he got shot. Oh my god, that's awful. I shouldn't laugh. OK, Mr. Famous Last Words Boy. I have one for you. She reached into her overstuffed backpack and pulled out a book. Gabriel Garcia Marquez, The General and His Labyrinth. Absolutely one of my favorites. It's about Simone Bolivar. It's a historical novel, so I don't really know if this is true, but in the book, do you know what his last words are? No, you don't, but I'm gonna tell you, seeing your parting remarks. And then she lit a cigarette and sucked on it so hard for so long. I thought the entire thing might burn off in one drag. She exhaled and read to me. He, that's Mo Bolivar, was shaken by the overwhelming revelation that the headlong race between his misfortunes and his dreams was at that moment reaching the finish line. The rest was darkness. Damn it, he sighed. How will I ever get out of this labyrinth? I knew great last words when I heard them, and I made a mental note to get a hold of a biography of this Simone Bolivar fellow. Beautiful last words, but I didn't quite understand. So what's the labyrinth? And now's as good a time as any to say that she was beautiful. In the dark beside me, she smelled of sweat and sunshine and vanilla. And on that thin moon night, I could see little more than her silhouette, except for when she smoked, when the burning cherry of the cigarette washed her face in pale red light. But even in the dark, I could see her eyes, fierce emeralds. She had the kind of eyes that predisposed you to supporting her every endeavor. And not just beautiful, but hot too, with her breasts stringing against her tight tank top, her curved legs swinging back and forth between the swing, flip flops dangling from her electric blue painted toes. It was right then that when I asked about the labyrinth and when she answered me that I realized the importance of curves, of the thousand places where the girls' bodies ease from one place to another, from arc of the foot to ankle to calf, from calf to hip to waist to breast to neck to ski slope nose to forehead to shoulder to the concave arch of the back to the butt to the etc. I'd noticed curves before, of course, but I had never quite apprehended their significance. Her mouth close enough to me that I could feel her breath warmer than the air. That's the mystery, isn't it? Is the labyrinth living or dying? Which is he trying to escape? The world or the end of it? I waited for her to keep talking, but after a while it became obvious she wanted an answer. Uh, I don't know. Have you really read all those books in your room? <laughs> oh god, no. I've maybe read like a third of them, but I'm going to read them all. I call it my life's library. Every summer since I was little, I've gone to garage sales and bought all the books that looked interesting. 
So I always have something to read. But there's so much to do, you know, cigarettes to smoke, sex to have, swings to swing on. I'll have more time for reading when I'm older.